services. So that's what we want the change All right. to happen. The realization of the UHC. Yes, uh, UHC. Uh, and, and I'm looking at, you know, a demanding yes, yes. that the national and county government also issue confirmation letters yes. on permanent and pensionable terms on the UHC hired, especially during the COVID-19 period. Did yes. you realize this? UHC and the other form of okay. contract because we have some other dubious contracts that are existing under dubious. the county. Yes, so let me say this, that in, when COVID came in, in the year 2019, 2020, we, we, we actually experienced a lot of pressure in our health system mm -hmm. so that we could not be able to work those who were in the service. So we went actually on a strike to push government to employ more staff. So they employed close to 10,000 healthcare workers, and currently those who are still in, uh, under that uh, UHC are around 8,700. 8, uh, 8, so these are the people we are pushing that they can be able to be appreciated after actually serving this country during that time, difficult time, that they can only be transitioned to permanent and pensionable. Because again, what they are earning, like the clinical officers who are diploma holders, they are earning around uh, uh, 50,000. And this money is taxable. And when you tax it, they take home less than around 30,000. So the money cannot actually sufficiently provide for them, yet they work in the same, they are actually uh, posted in the same facility, work at the same uh, hours, mm -hmm. that is eight to 10 hours a day. And actually, they have no privilege even to go for, 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 for study, study leave. So that is the kind of punitive terms that we want to come to an end. You, you want to come, Dr. Ari, I'm sorry for interjecting. Yes. You want to come to an end. Yes. Has progress been made at all after Let, this argument you're speaking on? Let me say, yes. yeah, that's where I was going. Okay. That after that, I think their first term contract ended in the year 2022, uh, the year 2023, and we were pushing that again to be transitioned. So the, then uh, the ministry said and the council of government said they did not have money to transition them to permanent and pensionable. So right. the public service commission who advertised for their position uh, advised that they then extend their contract for one year so that then they can be able to, to, to actually to, uh, get money and put them on permanent and pensionable. The most undoing thing is that there is a body we call the Intergovernmental Coordination Summit that is chaired by the president, sitting on 9th up to 12th February 2023, again made a different direction. He gave a different uh, resolution, which indicated that they were to extend the, 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 the contract for their period of, of uh, three years, okay. making it six years, because the first one was three years, three years making it six. Now, what happened is that the ministry heeded to the advice of the Public Service Commission and they gave them one year. The, la the county government went and gave them fiscal letters for three years. Right. So this has been uh, uh, without uh, actually causing a lot of confusion because then the contract ended for one year in May and there was a push where we appeared before the, the joint parliamentary committee, the Senate, and the, where they agreed then that they extend for the next two years. Mm -hmm. And the, the same issue of lack of funds is what was being cited. So As we feel us. that uh, we, there is a deliberate move to continue actually victimizing these people, uh, I mean, uh, uh, continue actually discriminating them and not paying them as it deserves because they do not have uh, uh, do not actually have the benefit of the other people who are on permanent and pensionable. And in that case, we are, as much as we, we, we know that already they have been extended for this year, it's something that we don't agree. And if you see what we have agreed with the as county is harmonize the terms. Mm -hmm. So as much as they can continue on that contract, harmonize the payment. And this should be actually be taken back, uh, uh, backdated to when they started working. That right. is the, that's our agreement. That is the position as yes. at now. In fact, today, you know, a lot of Kenyans are uh, with you on this, talking about 99 days to be precise. Later, we're looking at three months, yes. seeing these clinical officers back to the hospitals. It's very good to have you on uh, mm -hmm. our, the show tonight. Uh, the Thank KUKO you. Secretary General, uh, George Gibore, Thank you. for creating Thank time you. to be Anki, here. Anki. But we have to close that, Terry. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. And I must point out that... Uh, why every Kenyan is very anxious and we are pushing for change is mm. because the people who are leading this country, who we have bestowed 
trust that they can use our resources to benefit everyone, they are, they are letting us down. Mm. You cannot have people of equal value paying them 15,000, 30,000, in various, against the existing uh, uh, policies and laws that is there. And that is why we continue encouraging that this is uh, a moment that this change, if the Gen Z, indeed uh, Gen Z's must continue to push, so that we realize the changes that can come with this in, in this country as a whole. Thank you very much, Dr. for your words, because we ever remember you